the periodic table is arranged in a variety of patterns and one pattern uh, that you can use to help you out is to figure out energy levels and where electrons are located around an atom. The periods go this way, 1 through 7, and the groups go this way, 1 through 18. And that can help you tell, first of all, how many energy levels there are, and then how many electrons are in each energy level. So if we start here with hydrogen, I'm going to draw a little nucleus there in the letter H, and it's in period 1, so that means there's one energy level around it. And by energy level, I mean a space where you could find the electrons. Sometimes these are called electron shells. I'm going to call them energy levels. And in this one, there'd be just one little negative electron there. If you have a helium atom, let's make this a helium atom by adding an HE, you would have two electrons. And that's because there's one and two elements right there. So the elements are arranged so that you can figure out how many electrons there are in this. This is one of the patterns you can pick up. If you go down to the second period, there are two energy levels. So if we wanted to get rid of this, uh, let's see, let's try lithium. That's the second energy level. Let's draw our nucleus there. Uh, because lithium is third on the periodic table, that first energy level would have two electrons in it. And then the next energy level would go out here, and it's the first one over, so it would have one electron. If we went to beryllium, it would have two electrons. If I change that into a B and an E. If I went to boron, it would have five electrons, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, what to take note of though is if I went all the way over and made this neon, let me just fill that in, let's pretend it's neon for a second, I'd need to fill in this whole thing and this would hold eight total electrons. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are two energy, there's two electrons in that first energy level, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the second. And if I was to get to the third, there could be eight in that. And then the fourth, there would be one if it was potassium, two if it was calcium. And then once you get here into the transition metals, things get a little strange. And I'm not gonna discuss that in this tutorial. But if you can follow this pattern, up through the fourth energy level. Uh, for instance, let's try potassium. So you'd have one, two, three, four energy levels. I'd need to have another. There's my third energy level, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in it. So its third energy level is full. And then its fourth energy level would only have one electron. There we go. And remember, those outside electrons are called valence electrons. And anything in this group has one valence electron in its outside energy level. Uh, so that has one valence electron. Anything in this group has two. I don't know if you remember, but beryllium had two. Well, so does magnesium, calcium, and so on. And then if you go over to boron, all of these have three. Everything under carbon has four. Everything under nitrogen has five. Under oxygen, six, seven, and eight. So the noble gases, that's this whole group right here and they're non-reactive. And the reason they're non-reactive, um, well, hang on, before I go there, realize helium only has two in its outside energy level. Everything under that has eight. But all of them have their outermost energy level full. Whereas you come over here to lithium, sodium, potassium, its outer energy level only has one. This energy level has seven. 
So if it has one, it's real easy to give that electron away when it reacts. If it has seven, it would be real easy to gain an electron when it reacts. So in summary, remember, if you count down the periods, that'll tell you how many energy levels that element has. And you can count across to find out how many electrons it has in each energy level. And that method works up to calcium. Uh, the other pattern to be aware of is looking at group 1, 2, and then 13 through 18. You should memorize how many valence electrons are in the outermost energy level. Hope that helps.